because see how this is wider? It gives you a lot more angle than the 1330. Oh, is that cool? All right, guys, we are at Adams Drive Shaft, the new world headquarters here in kind of shadowy, breezy, and a little bit cold Las Vegas. This is just a, a, a wicked cool new facility for them. They used to be over in Henderson, Nevada and have recently moved in the area. They're right at the base of the, at the airport, which I gotta tell you, I think is super fun because I get love watching these giant we have trains in Conneaut, we have planes in Las Vegas. But we have a unique- I see another train montage happening here soon. We're gonna head inside, say hi to the guys. We've got our friend and acquaintance Dan here, and James himself is gonna be showing us around his facility and talking a little bit about what makes them so special in our industry. I'm so excited. We're going to see what this new space looks like uh, for the first time. It's only been open for, you know, maybe a few months uh, or so. We're gonna be getting kind of the behind scenes tour. We're gonna be touching base with James himself. Obviously Dan's gonna come out, which is one of our big points of contact. All around a solid group of individuals who, who has just led the industry in drive shaft and drive line production. And then, uh, the word on the street is that James is a fantastic fledgling bartender, uh, has some really cool background and has a really good bar and had the shots and shafts. So maybe if we're lucky, we'll get to share a drink with him. So we'll see where that goes. Do I come to the window? There he is. The man, the myth, the legend, hey, Dan. What's going? What's going great? How are you guys? Good, good. This is spectacular. This facility is awesome. I can't wait to see more. What's going on here? Is this like open to the public? What's the deal with the parts cart out front? So that's to keep it from people bringing their grimy stuff and tracking the grease and everything through the shop. We have them drop the grimes out there and then come in and fill out the paperwork and then we handle it from there. Do you get a lot of walk-in traffic? Yeah, we get quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, for drive shaft, drive line type stuff. I mean, is that like Jeep specific or do you guys do other things? No, we do everything. Do, do everything. everything. The Camaros, the low riders, hoppers. Oh, so somebody brings in like a, a low rider on hydraulics and whatnot, they're gonna drop their drive shaft out there, come in, sign out some paperwork yep, and do that. We take it to the back. And so then you have the cart. We tried putting Davey on the cart. Um, instead, he tried stealing it. Uh, totally okay. Uh, nothing actually happened. We got him on camera too. So. Oh, we keep trying to make sure that Davey doesn't get arrested while he's in Las Vegas. So please don't report that. But um, so like semi trucks and stuff, you guys do like that, and yeah. you put so we put some big honking. Are we gonna see some of those? You think? Uh, most likely. Dig it. I dig it. Big drive shafts. I got a thing for big drive shafts. <laughs> What's going on, James? How are you? Thank you Good. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you as well. You have a spectacular facility here. Thank you. Yeah, man, this is this is what's up. And we uh, we're outside, kind of talking about. It's not sunny Las Vegas, but you know, a little cloudy. But, not right now, right? Right, right. <laughs> but but the the place shines up real nice. And Dan was explaining the uh, the drive shaft cart. Davey was uh, you know trying to steal it, but we kept him down on it. Um, but yeah. this is this is what's up. I'm really looking forward to seeing the place. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Very cool. We'll take you on tour. Cool. Appreciate Go it. Go for it. Assemble it. Okay. We buy all the parts. Okay. Absolutely. Spicer. 
and yep. we have our own. So we, those three, we make pretty much the best dry wine out of all those. Three. Okay. So, so I was geeking out. Uh, Nyapco is closer to us, right? right? And a lot of people, I mean, I love Spicer, like I always have, but Nyapco brings the heat. You know what I mean? They bring the heat. They make a nice product. Yeah. I remember back in the day when um, big box stores used to contract them as their house branded U joints. They sold under a you know house label at that point, but yeah. that was a good product. And you're casting your own now? We have some of our own forged parts we do yet. Cool. And we're just forged. Out with more and more and more. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good for you. And, and some people say, well, why don't you use all the apple or why don't you use all the spice here? Well, to give you a good example, like on an each bar like this, this brand would probably give you more angle than the other brand, right? Okay. So the other brand may look a little thicker, but angle is what matters. Yep. Everybody's lifting their stuff. So that's why we would use tape. This would be in the Apple, the other part would be Spicer, so on and so forth. Right. That's how we determine which one's the best. Plus then we make our our home forge parts where sure. they on their own. So what size is that? So this oh, is I was gonna say this feels like thirteen ten. I mean, and that's so valuable because um, a lot of people don't always understand the difference, especially in the double carton yes. design itself. Yes. So that's cool. So what's really cool about this, so years ago, one of my first big pieces that, that people really thought was important that I did on social media was I outlined the value of the solid U-joint design. Adams for years have been selling their product lines under the, their heavy duty, their extreme duty series. Years ago, the difference for them was basically the greasable. So we have the 1310 series greasable, which I think is your heavy duty series, yes. right? Which is the heavy duty series. Um, and then we had the extreme series, right? which is solid. And ultimately the big difference is simply the greasable and the solid. I think 20, 30 years ago, we grew up thinking like these were superior because grandpa could grease everything and he felt good about it. The inherent downsides are the single lip seal. And then ultimately we have a hollow casting in the body itself. Whereas the 1310 solid series is actually a triple lip seal. It is lubed for life. Uh, depending on which manufacturer it is. It has these three little grease journals and ultimately centrifugal force shoves that grease out in a proportioned way. And then there's three little seals to try and keep debris out. So I think, you know, using high quality products is obviously one of your big yeah. fortes. Yeah. And it's also something you're really proud of because you're always like, hey, if you break it, you know, well, obviously not a wear part because view joints are wear parts. Yeah more in you know if you break it we'll we'll replace it type of mantra yeah, yeah and these really do balance easier and better because they have their tolerances a little bit tighter this because when you grease it it has to be able to purge the grease out yes so therefore it can't be as tight so in our opinion and do it this balance yeah and i think that experience. a lot of our industry has shifted to understand Absolutely. that and yeah. like i said 20 years ago we were all exactly. you know going for that yeah. 153 yeah. and now we just we know better talking point we always said to our customers because they just didn't understand the value of, of like the spicer solid u joint and so basically it's what was stock in your jeep you got a hundred thousand miles on it yeah we're going to lift it and we're going to use it a little harder but you got a hundred thousand miles out of that u joint you know, exactly. and then like James was showing 1350 and 1310, we can see the big difference. Now, if you follow much of what I say or do, um, in my own personal uh, Tundow LJ Chuck Norris, I run a 1350 in the rear and a 1310 in the front, all made here at Adams. I do that for clearance purposes with that one ton 60 front end and the exhaust and the drive shaft. Additionally, I like to make this my, my weaker link than my front. Nice arbor presses all over the place. Yeah. Man. This is how we build our CDs. Yep. Oh yeah, that's, whew. I love one of those. Yeah, this is so clean and organized. That is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing a lot of gear work? We do, we do a lot of gear work. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah we do all of gear work over here. That's originally how I started with doing gears and, and tail and stuff. And then, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting, that's, that's, I mean, I guess, and we're pretty similar in that regard. I thought for some reason you were more in like the limo customization. Was that not? We do that too. We do okay, you do. We do lift kit, we do, you know, 
yeah, we dabbled into a lot of that. You dabbled into a lot of that. <laughs> so when we met James, originally he was in uh, two different locations, buildings. They were kind of kitty cornering each other um, out in Henderson. What spurred the move into town? Well, I need more room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and you got it? Yeah, I need more room. We're going back and forth with golf carts. And it just seems more organized by this year. We're more efficient there. Okay. Yeah, especially if everything's under one roof at this Absolutely. point. So if you needed to, yeah. if you're working over there and you need a drive shaft for it, you can come over here, look at it, fit it up, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That is cool. I was admiring your bearing and race set. Yeah. That's spectacular. Do you do a lot of the gear setups? Do you have an installer on site who does a lot of yeah. setups? Yeah, to do. know the difference between these cups and cones yeah. is a lot of work, you're right? And that's a lot of what we might know. Right. So is that you doing it or is somebody else doing it? I used to do it. I trained other two people that I had okay. to do it, but I don't do it no more. No, yeah. Because I'm more now into the... The business management. Come out here and build if someone's missing or at the box. You got to wear all the hats, man. Absolutely. You got to wear all the hats. Where you know. I need to be, I'm at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But no, we have two people that are really dedicated to doing the differential. That's stuff. cool. Yeah. That's cool. And that's, like I said, that's a beautiful organization. Thank you. So you have 19 employees at Adam Drive Shaft at this point, right? We have like five welders at least going I've seen so far. Yes. Yeah. So we have, we have four machines over here. Have two machines over there and one press fold over there. Awesome. He does the press. He'll press it. He'll get the measurement. He'll press it. Okay. Then when he's done there, he'll go over there for them. You know, with the parts on it, and they will knock it straight, weld it, balance it. Spectacular. Now, uh, my own naiveness, I'm not aware. What's what do we have the water running on? When they weld it, they quench the weld. The reason why we quench the welds is because we want to stop it from pulling. Because when you add heat to it, yep. it pulls. Yep. You want to stop it from pulling immediately. So you use that to quench the weld, which stops it from pulling. That's so and cool. Then he'll take it, when it's you know done there, he'll check it straight again. And if it did pull a little bit, you'll have to heat it back into straight. In general, we get a lot of guys on the DIY side of things. They're like, oh, well, if I just burn it in, you know, it's reasonably fine. But you guys are actually taking that, that extra step to yeah. ensure that the work you did makes sense, right? And it's as true or as as, as, straight, as, as straight as it can be. Yes. And then he's running the, the dial indicator yeah. on it he'll now. He'll check it, and if it's out, he'll take the... Exact, yeah. Exactly what he's doing. He does that, and he'll quench it, and that'll bring it back in. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, the intelligent process of using, you know, thermodynamics to pull things around, yeah. which is just super cool. He's going to quench it again then. Yeah. Yep. Knowing where and how to heat and, and is just, again, that's the next level stuff that makes a, a good quality product. Yeah, and an experienced uh, technician, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's so, a lot on what they bring to the table. Six and a half years. Six and a half years. That's cool, <laughs> right? That's I mean, that's what I was saying out in the lobby. I said there's a core group of guys, and that's really the uh, thing about us as well, is we have a core group of guys that's kind of the lifeblood of the business, you right. know? And when you get that core group, that then just makes you uh, more successful and your product more successful, yes. you know? So, very cool. Any cool projects you're working on right now as far as uh, Jeeps or off-road vehicles? Or... off-road recovery. Okay. Tow truck. Right. That was a right. cool project. Still got a couple things we're working on with it. Road That's obviously project. down on display right it now. Is. It is. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Have you been in and around that booth then? Is that what? I have been around there yesterday uh, and the day before looking to make sure because he had to get the drive lines in right away, right before SEMA. So I was making sure if there's any issues or anything. The, the SEMA rush. So. Nobody knows they're going to SEMA <laughs> until about 48 hours apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever knows. And then it's like everything has to stop and yeah. do SEMA build, you know? Right. That's funny. That's so, just the nature of the that beast. That was a really cool project we're doing. Yeah. Cool. What are these in general applications? Okay, so what we have here is these is a, this is a YJ, okay? YJ yep. rear. This is a TJ Rubicon rear. Oh. And this is two TJ regular rear. Oh, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. So, so YJs, YJs are a little longer. Yep. The TJs are a little shorter. And then the Rubicon comes where it has the... The I companion flange on, on it on. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you guys look at how, you know, we've... We, again, we see exactly what... Uh, the technician back there was doing where we have our welds. We can see, you know, where the quench was. We can see a little bit of weight put on so that again, it's as balanced as humanly possible. I like how, obviously, if you've been in the industry much long, you see how they tape off the ends. This is all pre-paint, obviously. Pay a lot of attention to detail. 
So for instance, this is obviously a greasable one. So therefore, all the zerks line up. So when it comes time for you to grease your drive line, you just them in around everywhere trying to do it. Also, phase. A lot of drive line shops put stickers on it, and then the sticker falls off. You don't know how you know it would phase. So we dot. We put dots in it. Okay. That way the dots can never come off, and if yep. they ever pull this off, they'll know how to put it right back on to line up the U-joints. So now it's lined, U-joints are lined, now you know it's a phase. So. so it was one of the things that uh, Greg was actually talking beforehand. We oftentimes are replacing brand new drive shafts that a customer brings into us because they bought through um, some type of economy box retailer, and uh, they'll bring in a drive shaft. Um, that is quite often a new drive shaft, but is actually out of phase. Uh, Greg has a way, you know, we have this manner of putting an angle finder on there and determining degrees of out of phase that it is. Um, a drive shaft that's out of phase will have this real severe, severe rock from side to side. This is actually solid as can be, but uh, out of phase drive shaft will actually kind of uh, be like an uneven rocking chair. So again, YJ rear on an SYE. Uh, TJ Rubicon and TJ on a SYE as well. All these are 1310s. You can see that a little bit in the joint structure itself. And then these should be 1330s. Well, this is 1310. Oh, 1330. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're doing off the companion plan. 1330 doesn't give you knowing. Okay, so that's why we use 1310 here. For instance, like here's here's a here's a 1310 U joint. Yep. Right? See the angle on it? Yes. 1330 doesn't give you much, much at all. You can see how this is wider. It gives you a lot more angle than the 1330. Oh, is so that whenever. cool? Yeah. Yep. So again, you know, at building at this level of kind of fit and finish, we're talking about, you know, those little tiny bits of, of added articulation or angle. We don't want constant stress and you know duress put on these u-joint pieces because that's obviously just going to wear them out prematurely when you're using this in its off-road intended manner yeah so if, like for the really extreme diving the, the tg shaft the tg shaft so short and they have a lot of angles we'll switch this over to 1350 and then we have a 1350 fork yoke that we put on the pinion oh so okay. that way we can get 30 degrees out of that instead okay. of your normal eight do we know what degrees this is roughly? Generally, this is around 28. But That's we can cool. get 30 to 32, depending, you know, 35, just depending if we need to grind it a little bit. The slip yoke part, because yep. our yoke will go to 35. And that's your house pinion yoke. That is. Yeah. And we do have a Ford aftermarket 1350 yoke that will give us 35. So if we switch to that, but you can't always do that because it's a longer slip. Okay. And on TJs, we're going to be to our wheelbase. Depends on if they stretch the TJ or not, if we can do that part. Very cool. And then paint. Where does paint happen? Paint it right there in that booth. Okay. So this is where all the magic happens. So they'll come over here, Ron paints them, sets them over here, and then they go over there. So they come into the independent paint booth over here. Uh, they have a technician dedicated to spraying them down. Painted parts come here. Kind of that bag tag experience, wait to dry. And this is a little bit of our inventory management over here yes. where they get sorted, boxed, and then yeah, shipped so to the stock order or if it's a daily order or whatever is where it gets sorted here. And is that kind of the difference is this is a daily order? Those will be like maybe a stock order. See how they're all like yep. that. Stuff like that yep. so. And I, I, I'll have to say I'm super jealous of your shipping section too. So <laughs> just <laughs> that, that level of, of clean operation is, is, is gnarly to say the least. Very cool. And as you know, we take a lot of care to make sure our product shows up looking like it's brand new. Yeah. In the box, no scratches. I mean, everything is just perfect. That's That really matters to us. It costs us a lot more to box it than most people. Sure. But that little detail makes a lot of difference. So when people open it up, they got that like, wow. You know. Absolutely, and I think quality. like we, Again, it's those little intangibles that um, differentiate businesses. And so we get, I mean, we'll get a customer and we'll quote them a drive shaft and they'll say, hey, I can go on to eBay or Amazon and I can do blah, blah, blah. You, you can, you know what I mean? That's fine. Yes. We, we can all admit that. But the reality is you're going to get a better, uh, from start to finish, a better product yes. um, with, you know, with a line like yours. And the fact that in this day and age with shipping as cattywampus it is, packages are getting lost for three, four days at a time. We'll, we'll receive packages uh, for our own personal shop use 
and it'll be like the parts are falling out of the box and it hasn't been packaged well. It might got damaged on the way. That's obviously you're avoiding that because, yes. you know, if it got lost for three or four days and it gets left on a dock and thrown in the back of a truck, it's probably still showing up in excellent condition. Yes. You know, I mean, they can destroy anything, but it's very, you know, we try to, <laughs> they can try to take as much of that right. out as we can. Right. Most of the time. And I would say what 99% of the time, Dan, it's, it's steam oh. when it shows up. Yes. Yeah. It is. So. And I always enjoy the fact that you guys have this, this pre-cut foam and you do like a good job doing it as fillers. Uh -huh. um, keep stuff from sliding around and moving. Uh, we deal with a lot of different manufacturers. So we see how kind of everybody packages things. Yeah. Um, it's kind of our unique position because we're, we're getting so much. Right. There's some things that I'm like, I feel really good about drop shipping a customer. There's some product lines. I'm like, oh, God forbid I have to ship that to them. You know what I mean? Like... If I have to ship so-and-so's product, I'm going, oh, we better send it to us first and then ship it out to them because right. it's going to show up half destroyed, you know? Very cool. And then obviously, like, the really cool thing, you're always getting a t-shirt, which is something you, you started are. doing yep. many years ago. Yes. Yep. We had our own printing thing. We just print our own shirts. See? That's what I want to do. I want to print our own shirts. I don't, Davey's going to, the Savage is going to take care of it. I don't know. He's going to be in, in his little cubby. That's the way to do it. Print your own shirts, man. You know? Now, this machine has a lot of history. This is the first one I started doing when I was 15. Oh, seriously? So, I own that machine. So, uh, this is what you learned on, yeah. more or less. This, you this, cut your teeth, right? Absolutely. This is very old school right here. Okay. Where we would have a separate balancer and a separate press welder when we did it. Yeah. Now, these machines, you can do it all at once. And we do dry lines for everything, like for instance, the Chevy truck, mm. you know, little project car of customers. Okay. We need to build a high performance drive line for this because of the motor and the horse sure. and stuff like that. Yeah, which is cool because I think a lot of people, you know, certainly in the off road industry, think just Jeep drive shafts. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was 15, started right. doing gears, started doing drive lines like all these drive lines here. Yep. And in 2008, what happened? <laughs> the crash. <laughs> Right, so I need to make sure my employees had a job. It yeah. feels like you've been a, like a Jeep business for forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that. So in 2008, you're sitting there thinking, man, you know what's going to happen? So I said to myself, you know, if you sit here and wait for business to come to you, uh, you're going to go out. You'll always go out of business. Go out and find Nobody's going to come and so rescue you. That's what I did. I was going out and trying to find it. Yeah. And then it started to come back. You know, just started growing. And yeah. Here we are. Yeah. And you Very know, cool. think about this. What's unique is like. Here, we build drive shafts for anything and everything, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you have all these shelves right here, parts. You got four or five shelves of just different, a million different parts for a million different vehicles. But over there, we have this much parts because Jeeps take this much parts. So yeah. That's why I have to have all these shelves here because you have to have all these parts because you're doing such different things. Yes. You know? I was going to say, I, I would like to, uh, if I can cuddle that, um, <laughs> that would be ideal. So, yeah. So... Let's just do a little thing here. Oh, do you hear the beef? Right. They hear the beef. That's. There you go. You got your 1350, 1310. So we have the 1310, the 1350, and what is going to be installed in the back of Chuck Norris very soon. <laughs> just for just for giggles. Yeah. I don't. I can barely even move that. Where's the crane to move that at that point? Right here. <laughs> oh, right. <there. laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Shafts and Shots. Today, we're gonna to teach you how to grease your 1350 Extreme Duty CV dry shafts. Learn what the Zerks are, what tools to use, and how often you should grease them. After that, we'll have a nice shot of one of these whiskeys over here. My uh, thing on the side is trying to make craft drinks. Oh, is it really? Yeah, I like to make my Manhattan with the, you know, old fashions, all that kind of stuff. Not that's that we do it during the day or anything. Yeah, well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> but once in a while, you know, like in my house, I have a, a bar. It's yeah. A nice bar. So, yeah, yeah. This is this cool. is all whiskey. Yeah, yeah. you guys want a beer? Have a beer. No. I'm or if you want this, I can make you gin and tonic. I can whatever you like. Um, vodka tonic, you name it. Uh, I will take a. Do you have a honey whiskey? Yeah, you got Tennessee honey yeah. there. I got Tennessee honey. I'm gonna wash my hands now. Is your fireball open? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That we. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want? 
Oh. You know, I'll do this. My niece got this for me when she went up to school up there in Oregon. So, cheers. Cheers. Appreciate your guys' yeah, business. Absolutely. We and, appreciate uh, your business you, and, and allowing us to come and do this. this. Booming out and supping there like Lou Will. Did you see that shaft Harder, so the yeah, shots yeah. right there? Oh, okay. Different kinds of tequila. All right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this look around Adam's drive shaft here in Las Vegas. What an impressive facility this is. That is a true testament to kind of the American spirit. Just the, the dedication to entrepreneurship. James and family, um, you know, as far as his son, his sister. You know, obviously the folks are reinvesting in the community, not just here in Las Vegas, but the, the Jeep community as a whole. You know, I hope that you take away the fact that, yes, they're super capable Jeep and off-road drive shaft builders, but they're also doing, you know, limos and semis and really trick vehicles like this behind me. And that just adds to the depth and professionalism that they bring to the table. I've had the best time. You know that I'm a child and I am in a toy store at this point. So thanks so much to Adam's Drive Shaft. Folks, if you like this, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment below. Tell us something that jumped out at you, something that's super cool. Make sure you head over, find all of their social media, be it on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, all those kind of goody places. And make sure that if you're thinking about ordering, give us a call, head over to sfj4x4.com or you know what, call them directly and you know figure out exactly what that custom application drive shaft you need. Until then, Jeep on.